Okay, let's differentiate some trigonometric functions. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. The derivative of cosine x, negative sine x. Now, the, all four other trigonometric functions also have derivatives, which you should memorize. But if by chance you don't have them memorized, you can always use the, the, these derivatives right here to get the derivatives of the other ones. For instance, y is equal to tangent x means that y is equal to sine x over cosine x. Okay, so if I want to differentiate tangent, I can just differentiate this quotient. So dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be, okay, I have to use my quotient rule, right? So I'll take the denominator, cosine x, times the derivative of the numerator, which is cosine x. Derivative of sine is cosine. Minus, that subtraction sign right there is due to the quotient rule, the numerator, sine x, times the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be derivative of cosine, negative sine. And all that is divided by the denominator squared. Okay, so cosine squared x. So I have cosine times cosine, that's cosine squared, minus sine times minus sine, that's sine squared. So this comes out to be cosine squared x plus sine squared x all divided by cosine squared x. And of course, cosine squared plus sine squared, you know from your trigonometric identities, that's just the number one. So this is one over cosine squared x, and one over cosine is secant, and so this turns out to be secant squared x. Did that go off the screen? Nope. Okay, so there we have secant squared x. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. You can always go through this derivation process. You probably have that memorized, though, so it's no, no problem right there. Okay, so we have this y is equal to x minus 3 sine x. Okay, an algebraic function, uh, the difference between that and a trigonometric function. So we'll just differentiate left to right. I'll say the derivative of y with respect to x will be, okay, first I'll differentiate x with respect to x. The result is 1 minus, that's my subtraction sign, I have three times the trigonometric function, so this constant I'll just write down as three, then I'll differentiate sine x, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So not too bad, the derivative is one minus three cosine x, if this is the original function right here. Okay, let's go to the next board and differentiate a little bit more complicated trig function. Okay, for problem three, we have g of t is equal to t cubed cosine t. It's the product of an algebraic function and a trigonometric function, so we'll have to use our product rule. So the derivative, g prime of t, will be equal to, product rule, first, t cubed, times the derivative of the second, minus sine t, plus the second, cosine t, times the derivative of the first, so I'm going to differentiate t cubed, I'm going to get 3t squared. Okay, so let's simplify a little bit. Let's see, I think I'll write this as 3t squared cosine t, I'll take that term first, minus t cubed sine t, and then if I wanted to, I suppose I could factor out a t squared from each term. At this point, I would kind of look in the back of the book and see what the answer is back there and see if you can get your answer to match that answer. Um, I like to write the positive term first and then the subtraction sign with the next term. I really like to take this 3t squared and write it out in front as a coefficient so that later on I don't mistake this for being cosine of t times 3t squared. That would be wrong. The argument of this function is just t, and that whole cosine t is multiplied times 3t squared. So better if you bring that out in front. So I'll just leave that one that way. Problem four, y is equal to secant theta times tangent theta. Let's differentiate with respect to theta. So dy d theta. Okay, again, now I have a product rule right here that I'm going to have to use. It's secant theta times tangent theta. So I'll take the first, which is secant theta times the derivative of the second. Okay, the derivative of tangent, remember we just did that, that's going to be secant squared. Okay, plus the second tangent theta. 
times the derivative of the first. Okay, the derivative of secant, maybe you have this memorized, maybe you don't. I'll just tell you the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So, secant theta, tangent theta. Okay, does that stay on the board? Yep, that looks okay. All right, so secant times secant squared, that'll give me a secant cubed. Here, this will be secant theta times tangent squared. Let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. Secant cubed theta plus, what did I say over here, tangent squared theta, secant theta. Now, I would be tempted to factor out a secant from each term. Let's try that. So I have secant theta times, okay, when I factor secant from that, I'll have secant squared theta plus, when I factor secant from this term, I'll have tangent squared. And then at this point, I'd look in the back of the book and see what that answer looks like. Remember, there's a lot of trigonometric identities. And depending on what your, the uh, book that you're using does, you may have this answer. You may have an answer a little bit different. At this point, you need to look for a trig identity to get your answer to look like whatever answer is in the back of the book. Um, I kind of like to write these as products because, as you'll see later on, when we use derivatives, um, having them in factored form is a good idea because we like to set them equal to zero, and when they're in factored form, that means we can set each factor equal to zero. So having it in a kind of factored form right here isn't a bad idea. Okay, so that's a look at some derivatives of some trigonometric functions.